When a person thinks of women in the military, especially before the 21st century, many would say that women did not serve at all, other than in a stereotypical position such as a nurse. On May 19, 1942, the WAC or Women's Army Auxiliary Corps was created, and was later converted to full status as the Women's Army Corps on July 1, 1943. During World War II, around 150,000 women served for the military in positions other than nursing. Many men feared the WAC units and women's involvement in the military in general because they believed it would devalue their masculinity and that women were unfit to perform the same jobs. General Douglas MacArthur said that enlisted women were his best soldiers because they worked harder, complained less, and were more disciplined. President Eisenhower said that the women's contributions in efficiency, skill, spirit, and determination were immeasurable. During the Vietnam War, the WAC involvement peaked in January of 1970 when there were 20 officers and 139 enlisted women working at the Long Bin Post. One of these women was Mary Nichols. I really enlisted with the hope I would get to see the world. And I lucked, I lucked out because I saw a great deal of it. No, it wasn't that bad. Nowadays, the women participate more with, like the men do, but I did, the women's was a little, you know, we'd go out in the woods and they'd leave us there and we had to find our way back. That was probably the most strenuous thing we did. After my training, I was lucky enough to get stationed at Fort Ord, California. Beautiful place. Near Monterey, Big Sur. Ooh. Nice. Yes. <laughs> Big Sur. Oh yeah. Um, there I worked for, on the general staff in the G4, which is logistics, um, supplies, things like that. After her time working in California, Miss Nichols headed to Vietnam. Hmm. Well, the first experience was before we landed, because in a combat zone, your plane comes in and goes like that. <laughs> they don't. They don't glide in like you do at any other airport, and that was that was like everybody's going whoa. <laughs> that was that was that was neat though. Um, and after the plane ride, I went over. They bust us over to where we were going to be, and Long Bean is where I was stationed. It was a big army boat post. It was. Um, like, I think it, as I recall, it had like a 25 mile perimeter. So it was a big, big post. And uh, it had pretty much all the conveniences. They had a PX that sometimes actually had things in it, and uh, mess halls. And it was like being on any other post, really, except it got rocketed every night. What was it like being rocketed? Apparently it didn't bother me too much because I, they had to drag me out of bed. <laughs> I could have slept through it. But when, it did, when they did rocket us, we did have to go to the bunker. We had people in the bunker that would sit there hyperventilating. I mean, they were just like terrified. I, I never felt that way. I just never thought about that they were going to hit where I was, so. I think that's the sentiment of most people. I mean. I've never been in the military. I can't imagine what that would be like to actually have something being shot at you that people are trying to end your life. Do you think that, that most people, when they get in the military, you just kind of have to accept it? Because if you dwell on it, you would, you'd go nuts thinking about every time something happens, oh my God, here, or... Yeah, and there are people that do that, but I think the majority do not. Nobody goes to Afghanistan thinking, oh, I'm going to die here, you know, they don't, that's not the thought, you don't think that. So, and the closest any rocket ever came to us just landed about on the other side of this tall fence I told you about and shot dirt and stones over when we were on our way to the bunker, otherwise they never got any closer than that to us. Because we were kind of right in the middle of this big perimeter. As a result of her service, Miss Nichols received several awards. Well, the Army Commendation was for doing my job, and the Good Conduct Medal was for being good. No, I gotta jump in here. Yeah, all right. For not because getting, for you not, made a statement. For not getting caught, yes. And what kind of things <laughs> did you do that you didn't get caught at? We've all been wondering. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I never did anything illegal or immoral, but I did break rules. Well, we had a, a little, kind of a small above ground swimming pool right inside the WAC. The WAC detachment was surrounded by a fence, a big six foot fence. And we had our own little above ground pool in there so you could swim. Um, they had a screen where you could watch movies. People you know, would send us videos and we'd watch movies. Um, there was a restaurant, uh, a Chinese restaurant on base on, on the post that uh, was good. And we'd go there. And there was a MCO club where all the enlisted people met and just drank and, like you would in any bar. So that's the kind of stuff we did. Well, all I really did was sleep there. I mean, we, were, we worked long days. I mean, a 12-hour day was nothing. And it was seven days a week. So we did have, one time, we did have the 25th anniversary party of the Women's Army Corps. And we had a big party and invited all kinds of people to the debt to the whack debt, and uh, uh, that was fun. But other than that, I didn't spend all that much time there. After her service in Vietnam, Miss Nichols came back to the States and worked for many years in the government. Thankfully, she did not have to deal with the horrible treatment of many of her male counterparts. I think it was a horrible time in our nation's history. I have a sticker on my car window that says, never again will one generation of veterans abandon another. That's the motto of the Vietnam Veterans of America, and we mean it. We wondered, you know, what's their problem? You know, why are they doing that? You know, I mean, all right, so they're against the war, but why were they mad at us? <laughs> What'd we do? I mean, I grant you some of the things that happened, like Milai and things like that, were bad. But that happens in every war. There are things like that. Television. In World War II, you might have had some correspondence embedded with the troops, maybe. But they didn't send out bad news because that would have hurt morale. Plus, their stuff got vetted on the way out anyway. But in Vietnam, you had television crews. It was instant. People saw how horrible war is. Didn't think about how horrible it's always been. Just, oh, look, that's horrible, those, what those people are doing. And it was relayed back instantly. So yeah, that was probably really the first time that the rest of the country ever saw what war really is. And it's bad, and it's ugly, and they hated it, and obviously it was our fault. Not the politicians who sent us there, it was our fault. Wasn't so bad for me because there, are, to this day, are a lot of people who don't know women were even there. I run into that a lot. And, or if they, if they knew women were there, they think I was a nurse, which I wasn't. And, um, but as, so, as bad as some of the guys were treated when they came back, that didn't happen to me because nobody knew. And I don't know if it would have, if, even if they had known, but still, um, some of the guys have really sad stories to tell. Well, I came back to Rockford and kind of looked around for a job, didn't see anything I really liked. Heard the air, or the uh, FBI was hiring, so I went to see them, and they said, sure. So I went out to Washington to work for the FBI. I decided those people were nuts. I mean, they had so many. You know, I'd been all over the world, been in a war, and they treated you like, like you were in middle school, much less high school. I mean, they restrictions and rules, couldn't believe it. So I went over to the Pentagon one day, and um, it just happened they were looking for somebody with prior service, so I got hired on the spot, so to speak, and stayed at the Pentagon for the next 28 years. What's your job there? At the Pentagon? Over the years, it was different jobs. I started out as a clerk. By the time I, as a GS3 clerk, by the time I retired, I was a GS12 management analyst.
We are deeply grateful for your service to this country, Miss Nichols. Thank you. One, two, sound up. Three, four, get a count. One, two, three, four, one, two. Three, four, can I beat a slow?